Okay, listen up. This is First Five, where I ask if games are worth your time, not your money. I played a game for five hours, and I'm going to tell you if those were five hours well spent. Today, we're obsessively striving for those seven golden letters in Runner 3! Runner 3 is a game that's obsessed with perfection. Look no further than the fact it has a dizzying seven different categories for measuring that perfection, culminating in the ultimate 100% perfect completion of a level dubbed Special Perfect Double Plus, which is reserved for when you've snagged every bar of gold, collected every gem, and nailed every bullseye on both of the level's divergent paths. Suffice to say, Runner 3 will see you replaying many of its levels repeatedly. This is a game that demands repetition and refinement at every turn. Like many platforming games with collectibles strewn throughout, simply making it to the finishing line isn't actually that difficult. But making it there while collecting all 100 bars of gold is where the game's true challenge is found, and the entire game is built around striving for that perfect run. And perfection never comes the first time. Most of Runner 3's challenges have enough wiggle room for error that they don't require outright muscle memory to complete, but the game's core loop is a cycle of slowly discovering a level's ins and outs. Because of its rhythm platforming gameplay that keeps you perpetually moving forward at a constant pace, there is only ever one extremely exact path to follow to snag every collectible, and a single mistake means going back and doing the whole sequence again resulting in a constant loop where you slowly refine your path through the level, slowly buffing out every error that made you miss a gold bar or gem. Runner 3 isn't content to let you sit back and fall into a rhythm, however. It's constantly throwing new concepts at you to absorb. Jumping, sliding, trampolines, walls to kick, minecarts, springboards, this weird food car thing. Other games like Mario or Donkey Kong regularly introduce and discard new mechanics every level, but Runner 3 introduces entirely new buttons or vehicles in every level, in rapid-fire succession. The farther I get into Runner 3, the more I'm convinced by all these different eclectic mechanics that the developers somehow got me to pony up for the world's most complex bop it. As a side note, amusingly enough, they're both priced at $30. All those different rapid-fire mechanics have a surprising amount of depth in spite of their individual simplicity, however. The most notable example is the slide. In its most basic form, the slide just lets you duck under obstacles. But if you slide while in midair, you actually fall significantly faster than if you just let gravity drag you down, which leads to a few different applications. You can abuse it to execute a quick succession of little hops by jumping, sliding, and jumping again, and the game regularly requires you to utilize its increased speed to snag a gem or go down one of its many special paths. Everything I've just described is exemplified most clearly in Runner 3's impossible levels, which act as a compressed vertical slice of everything that's great about this game. Even though I can't beat a single one of them, I can say with confidence that they are absolutely the high points of this game. Both mechanically and conceptually, these levels take everything that Runner 3 is good at and jacks it up to 11. The impossible levels are basically just challenge rooms, taking concepts and mechanics introduced in recent levels and implementing them in a blisteringly hard gauntlet that requires you to learn all the ins and outs of how your abilities interact with each other. But this results in not only the densest, most difficult challenges in the game, but also elevates Runner 3's core loop of repetition, memorization, and perfection to its tightest, purest form, and most eloquently shows what this game is capable of. When I was spending a half hour beating my skull against one of these levels, slowly inching my way further into it, experimenting with different patterns of jumps, slides, and kicks, the game truly clicked for me. On that high note, let's move to the verdict. This probably won't come as much of a surprise based on what I just described, but five hours is not nearly enough to get a quote-end-quote complete experience out of Runner 3. This is a game that demands you explore and master it thoroughly, and to engage with it on the level it wants to be engaged with just plain requires more than a single weekend. Needless to say, however, that if this game is up your alley, you'll have a list of challenges to complete for a long time to come. You can aim to survive Runner 3's levels and just try to reach the finish line, but that would be kind of missing the point. Everything in this game is focused on encouraging the pursuit of that special double perfect plus, and that pursuit of perfection is where this game shines most. Hey, I hope you enjoyed this episode of First Five. If you did, like, subscribe, or best of all, share this video around wherever you can.
Runner 3 by Choice Provisions is available on PC and the Nintendo Switch. I'll see you all next week.